Balance of Payment Crisis Launch Pad for Much Awaited Reforms It seems to be interesting. Please tell me in detail. You know one famous saying Necessity is the mother of all inventions. This adage is very well applicable to the creation of liberalized Indian economy. Keen to know the counters of the necessity? The necessity was to save Indian economy from one big crisis situation and to make it resilient enough to avoid any future shocks too. Do you know in June 1991, foreign exchange reserves dropped to $1.2 billion, able to cover just two weeks of imports. This means that India didn't have money to cover imports more than just two weeks. Inflation had reached 13.7% in 1991 to 92, as against 6 to 7% in 1988 to 90. Current account deficit expanded to 3.2% of GDP in 1990-91. Also, the external debt was 38.7% of GDP in 1991-92. Rate of growth of GDP had collapsed to 0.8% in 1991-92. Debt service ratio had reached a worrying level of 35.3% in 1990-91. Owing to the above crisis situation, commercial banks had decided to stop lending to India. Non-resident Indians, whose deposits in India could have been used for meeting foreign exchange obligations, began withdrawing their savings. The option for India was either to default on its import payments or to seek conditional resources from the IMF. A default would have affected India's substantial oil and intermediate goods imports. It would have been difficult to manage the economy without essential imports. Prime Minister Narasimha Rao converted the prevailing economic crisis into an opportunity to launch massive economic reforms. He introduced Dr. Manmohan Singh, our current Prime Minister, as on March 2012 an economist into the cabinet as finance minister and gave the new minister his full support, allowing him to evolve and implement path-breaking economic reforms. The foreign exchange crisis forced India as an immediate reaction to approach the IMF for conditional lending. The government had tried all sources of funding for meeting its import obligations. It had even shipped gold to the Union Bank of Switzerland and the Bank of England to obtain foreign exchange. In addition, it initiated a lot of strategic economic reforms to tackle the situation. More of this subsequently. Oh, okay. Now I'm getting the meaning of adage used by you in the start of the discussion. Yeah, I know about this stuff little bit the way I know about Ramayana and Mahabharata. But I'm really not sure about what were the reasons for that and how it got manifested into such a big problem. Well, then let's delve deeper into the reasons first and then we will see that how all these issues have converged into a balance of payment crisis for India and how we have resolved those issues through stabilization and structural reforms and how those reforms have impacted Indian economy. Following were the key reasons of balance of payment crisis in India. Improper fiscal discipline and too much foreign borrowing by government. Sudden rise in imports bills because of opening up of trade barriers by government. Low confidence of international business community on Indian ability to meet its obligations on trade and finance. Political instability. Let's go into each of this one by one. Improper fiscal discipline and too much borrowing by government. During 1980-1990, the government of India has spent a lot of money in various kind of expenditures. In order to find a quick fix to the problems of poverty and unemployment, as a result of which, government spending had increased continuously, with no proportionate increase in government revenues. 
And as we know, when government spends more than what it earns, it runs a deficit. So, wait a minute. How government can spend more than what it earns? It's like I have five rupees in my pocket. I can buy items worth five rupees only. Correct observation. But suppose you have to buy a chocolate more, while you don't have money. What will you do? I would have borrowed the amount from you by promising that I will pay you back once I will receive my next pocket money, or I would have promised the shop owner directly that I will pay you in future for this chocolate. Correct. So government of India has done the same. It borrowed heavily from public, domestic banks, and mainly from foreign banks, in the anticipation that they would pay them once they earn more. In the period 1980 to 85, nearly 50 percent of all external financing needs were met by external assistance. By the mid 1980s, aid weariness forced the government to rely more on commercial borrowing. Consequently, external debt started dominating the balance sheet, peaking at 38.7 percent of GDP in 1991 to 92. Moreover. Short-term borrowings were a large proportion of total debt. India's problem is primarily in the area of revenue deficits. The capital account deficit does not pose long-term problems. Why? I didn't get your last line. Revenue deficits versus capital account deficits. See, if you had borrowed money from me for buying books. I would have never worried about your credibility, as I would have been sure that you are spending money in the direction which would definitely reap more money in future. That is, some day you will become a graduate from good college and would return my money. Similarly, investment in productive capital in an economy made in the present, if prudently carried out. Will generate an adequate income stream in the future to pay for capital costs incurred and also generate positive returns. So these kind of expenditures does not impact credibility of the economy. In fact, they add positively to it. As against this, if a company or government borrows money to pay salaries to its unproductive employees, well. The debt is used to fund revenue expenditure, where no tangible returns are expected, and hence the deficit from here categorized as revenue deficit, if balloons inordinately, leads to serious cash flow problems in the future. From 1950 to 1980, the national budget was usually characterized by revenue surpluses, and capital account deficits. Which was okay. However, after 1980, all democratic governments, for political reasons, had willingly allowed the revenue deficit to rise over the years to dangerously high levels. The revenue deficits reflected an excess of annual consumption expenditure by the government over its annual income. The deficit was caused by excessive employment in the government sectors. That is, high salary accounts, uneconomical pricing of goods and services by public sector enterprises, a growing interest burden as the deficit is funded through debt, which needs to be serviced as interest. Mounting subsidies, again populist measures to gain votes, and rising defence expenditures. Please note, as I am repeatedly mentioning that. Majority of our funding during that time was from foreign banks, and one clear implication from this limitation was that we have to pay the interest and capital of borrowed loan in foreign currency, that is, in dollars. So, higher deficit, more burden on the economy exchequer to pay back the debt, considering a good part of it was dollar loans. Strained balance of payment, low forex reserves in kitty. 
If the forex reserves go so low as in the 1991 to 92 crisis, the risk of default is high. That is, where if you default in giving my or shop owner money back, other shop owners will lose faith in your paying abilities, which could impact your future credibility. The same happened with Indian government. They have used already limited forex reserves to such an extent in paying interest for loans and that too in very fragile macroeconomic environment that their credibility to service their current debt and to pay for future loans went down significantly.